This week you will be watching a film called Digital Nation. So it says here that we want to catch up with our reading. We want to read chapter one of the Computer Essentials textbook. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my website. If I go to teaching and then 115, you will see a sample of chapter one. So if you haven't obtained your textbook yet, you can still go ahead and start to read chapter one in the Computing Essentials textbook. So for next week, we know we're going to read uh, chapter one in Computing Essentials. We also need to skim through chapters five through seven in that textbook. We're going to make sure that we have our Nova ID and password, and we're going to start to get a hold of our textbooks. And we're going to watch a film uh, by the name of Digital Nation. And the following class on January 29th, you'll see that we have a quiz. The quiz is on the film Digital Nation. So let's go ahead and talk about where we find that and some of the themes that are brought up in Digital Nation. I'm going to click on the Concept Files tab on Blackboard. And in here I will see a folder for Digital Nation. I have a link to watch the program online. This will take me to the PBS website where you can watch the full program for free. There are commercial interruptions throughout the program just to give you a heads up. If you have Amazon Prime or you want to order it through Netflix, you can watch it without com com uh, excuse me, without commercial interruptions, but it is available on that PBS website for everyone to watch for free. There's also a transcript if you would prefer to read the video or to read along during the video. So I've specified the sections that I want you to watch. The video is about 90 minutes, but I've asked you to watch the first hour, essentially, if you look at the the timestamps here. So Digital Nation talks about a few themes. Uh, specifically it talks about multitasking. It talks about virtual reality and it talks about the evolution of the Internet. Just to give you a little bit of history of the film uh, it was a follow-up to a previous Frontline film called Growing Up Online. Growing Up Online was a film that I actually used to watch in this class in, in 115, but it became a little bit dated. It has a lot of references to MySpace and other older technologies in the, in the video. Uh, but Growing Online was about students that are today are traditional college-age students, 18 to to 21, but at the time that the film was made, these students were in elementary school, and it looked at how a generation reacted that really could not remember a time when they were not online, thus the, the title Growing Up Online. Uh, Digital Nation was a follow-up about two years later. They really looked at the fact that, hey, this is affecting everyone, not just that particular generation. So the main theme in the video is this idea of multitasking. But it also discusses virtual reality as well as the evolution of the Internet. This right here is an essay question. This question will be on the first quiz. So I told you that we will have our first quiz when we meet on the 29th, and it will be on the film Digital Nation. You will be asked to write one essay, which will be 50% of your grade, and you will have uh, five, you know, objective, like a multiple choice or two false question that are more just fact checking that shouldn't be anything that you need to prepare for short of, you know, actually of watching the video. So the essay question is three parts. 
The first question asks you to define the term multitasking. I realize a lot of us could probably define multitasking right now without even watching the film. The next question asks us, how does the digital revolution change multitasking? So the growth of technology, has that caused multitasking to increase or decrease or stay the same? That also might be a question people feel like they can answer without watching the video. But this last question, you definitely need to watch the video for. And this is the majority of the uh, points for the essay question. So I said the essay question is 50% of your quiz grade, this first one being 10%, the second one being 10%, and this third one holds 30% of your quiz grade. In the film, Digital Nation, the producers have a clear conclusion that they reach about multitasking, whether or not they consider it good, or let me say positive, negative, or neutral. And they don't just state this opinion and call it a day. They actually present a lot of evidence for why they have reached this conclusion about multitasking. So I'm asking you to explain to me what response the um, film reaches about multitasking and to explain a piece of that evidence. Just to give you an example, when you watch the film, the MIT study that they discuss is one example of their evidence, although that's not all of it. You could certainly use a, a different example. If you have questions about the essay question, you can certainly send me an email. Or we can talk about it outside of, of class. Um, I do expect you to write your essay question on the quiz without notes or, or anything like that. So please talk to me in advance if you have questions on that. So going back to the schedule, we know that we need to watch Digital Nation this week. And we're having a quiz on the 29th on the film Digital Nation, 50% of which is the essay question I just showed you. And then we'll have five or so multiple choice questions that are more sort of fact checking, not anything that you would study for specifically short of just having watched the video. The next thing I want to discuss is this project topic. Oh, excuse me. You know what? I just forgot to discuss, I forgot something here. The Web 2.0 portion of the video. So Digital Nation also discusses the evolution of the Internet. I'm going to go ahead and flip back to our presentation. So, originally, the, re the Internet has been sort of retroactively termed Web 1.0. And this was considering the Internet as essentially a place to go. When we think about the late 90s, we think about going online to look up something, to find information that's already there, as opposed to today, when the Internet is considered more of a thing to do. Web 2.0 sites are different than Web 1.0 sites uh, in a few ways. One is that they often offer an individual user experience. When I go to Facebook, I see something different than when you go to Facebook. The other thing about these Web 2.0 sites are they are often collaborative. They allow us to post and add content to the Internet as opposed to just going there to look at what's already there. Finally, these Web 2.0 sites are often integrated where I purchase something on Amazon and it prompts me to update my Twitter feed. You know, in the Web 1.0 generation, we didn't really see, or we didn't at all see websites advertising or integrating these services of other websites. I'm going to just shrink that so we can see the text a little larger. The prediction is that Web 3.0 will become the Internet as a way to live, where the Internet is so ingrained in our life 
that really there is no life outside of being online, that so many different devices and technologies are reliant on the internet. This is another thing that's addressed in Digital Nation. They make some references to the internet becoming a way to live. I also think you should look at this link, what is Web 2.0, to see a little bit more of a description of the change from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0. I know that some of the discussion on this page is very technical. I would just sort of scan through this and just try to get a sense of the difference between the previous Web 1.0 and the move to, to Web 2.0 and you know what the, the future might hold with Web 3.0. Let me go ahead and go back to the schedule now. And we'll see that Pretty soon I'm asking you to select a topic. This topic is for your web project, and it's not too early to start thinking about this topic. If you go down to the HTML project tab, you will see the list of potential topics. It's essentially all of the topics in our course. And we should only have two students per topic. The website projects are individual, but I don't want to get, you know, 30 websites on Facebook. So to sort of take a step back, you're going to be creating a website for the class. The first page of the website is basically just a welcome, this is my topic, and it's going to link to two other pages. On one of these pages, you're going to summarize your topic, and on the third page, you're going to list current events that relate to that topic. You're going to find a few articles on that topic. And we can talk about this more next week as well, uh, but you could also potentially have already chosen your topic. So I will only allow two students per topic, even though those two students are creating their own individual websites. There are two students that hold, maybe I have two students that have chosen computer security for their topic. You know, we don't want to do 25 sites on computer security. None of us would be interested in looking at the websites at the end afterwards. But, you know, two people could do separate websites on computer security. There are a few places that you can go to try to find current events. Now, generally speaking, a current event should be within the past six months, although that's really a relative term because with some technologies, you know, an article that's over a week old is, is too old and it's no longer current. And then with other technologies, something could be a year old and still be current. So there's a little bit of a judgment call there, but basically we're looking for things that are within the past six months. Let me give you some examples of topics that you could use. For hardware, I might talk about new monitors. I might talk about OLED monitors or projecting the screen into the, the air, so to speak. I might talk about tablets and their decreasing size. For the internet, I might talk about something called IPv6, which is an expansion of addresses that we have available. I might also talk about uh, efforts to expand worldwide internet access, or I might talk about uh, fiber optics coming to certain communities. For networking, I might talk about how machines are linked together, I might find current events on the benefits of networking, or specifically find things that are related to a, an office environment. For application software, I might write about new apps for a mobile device that I've uh, found out about. I might talk about, uh, well, any, any type of application that's running on top of the operating system, maybe a video game. System software refers to the operating system. This is where I might talk about predictions for Windows 9. Or even, you know, just the other day there was an article about, actually I think this was today, about HP now uh, going back to Windows 
seven on the, the new machines that they're selling. That was actually on, I believe that was on uh, CNN today. Computer security. I could talk about the recent theft of credit card numbers from Target. Or there was another article I was actually just reading today about the worst passwords from 2013, um, taken from a firm that writes one of these password management apps. Uh, they had said that uh, 123456 was the most common password last year. For ethics, ethics and computer security are definitely related. But the difference here is that we'd more be looking into the judgment call or the kind of situation that we might be put into as opposed to a more technical aspect. So in computer security, I might talk about how these credit card numbers were stolen from Target and in ethics I might talk about you know how banks might be responding or um, you know individual effects of identity theft. If you have trouble with that distinction and I know it's very dependent on the topic we could certainly talk about that individually. Information literacy is the a uh, process of finding information that's reliable online. So this is somewhere where I might talk about wikis and, and their reliability or plagiarism. That could be under information literacy as well. Near Microsoft Word, I might talk about new developments or I might talk about other word processing applications wouldn't necessarily have to be tied to Word. Similarly with Excel, I might talk about spreadsheet applications in general or changes to Excel 2013 over 2010. With access you could talk about databases uh, as well as just Microsoft Access itself. I might also talk about people's concern about having all of their personal information stored in databases. That's something that I might, an article I might pick for the access topic. PowerPoint, similar to Word and Excel, I might talk about changes from PowerPoint um, 2010 to 2013. Or I might talk about alternative presentation formats, things like Prezi. For Microsoft Office, I might talk about Office 365 and Microsoft's move to the cloud. So this is a topic where I want to look at Office in a more broad sense as opposed to a particular application. HTML5 and CSS3 are languages that we use to write and format our web page. So I might talk about, you know, new formatting or layout options that are enabled with HTML5. And then this other topic is sort of a catch-all. I do want you to report on information technology, but you might have something that doesn't really fit into one of these topics, in which case we could talk about that individually and you could fit into this component. So to take a step back and sort of recap what I'm saying here, you are later in the course creating a website. We will start working on the website in class on February 19th. The first due date for half of the website is April 9th, and then it's finished up on April 16th. The content of your website is a technology and current events related to that technology. So you need to choose a topic. You should probably have both a topic and a backup topic in mind, just in case more than two students have chosen your topic. There are a few places you can go to find topics. One is just google.com slash news. I know this uh, redirected after I typed it, but just google.com slash news. They have a technology section. And here you could read through technology stories. These tend to be refreshed every few hours. So if you don't see something here that you like, you could always uh, come back a little while later. So Fios, I could have discussed this in the internet topic if I had chosen that. 
this was the article I told you about the one two three four five six common password I could have discussed this as security this could have been security as well this article could be in the Microsoft Office topic uh, this could be in the topic of internet online TV news um, this could be a trademark issue could be in the topic of ethics uh, displays, a transparent display could be in the topic of hardware. So that should give you an idea of some of these articles and what topic they might fit into. You probably want two to three articles on your topic. Another place to look for articles is to go to the New York Times website. If you visit the New York Times website you can scroll down and click on technology and they have an entire page dedicated to technology articles. So here, this would be online television service, would certainly be an internet topic. Uh, so you could look through, through some of these as well. Three D printing could either fall under hardware, or this could actually be one of those other topics. If you find something sort of unique like this, we could discuss using that as a as one of the other topics. A third place to find articles is to go to CNET.com. It is the same website that comes up if you just type in news.com. And CNET.com is a website that gives us news stories that are specifically related to technology. I finished with the materials, so just to recap for what we should be doing next week. We need to catch up on reading Chapter 1. We should scan Chapters 5 through 7. In the textbook, I don't expect you to read every single page. But you should certainly, you know, scan the material. You should watch the film Digital Nation, and you should prepare to have a quiz on Digital Nation, looking at the essay question that I shared with you, as well as looking back on some of the themes that we discussed within Digital Nation. Finally, you should start to select a topic for your project. You have a little bit of time to pick this. But it's also in your interest to pick your topic soon before there are a lot of other students in the class that have chosen topics because then you have, you know, less to choose from. You might have a topic already in mind and then be looking for articles, but a lot of students find that they prefer to look at the available articles and choose a topic that way after finding a, a current event that sticks out for them. Okay, so now that we're clear on what we need to do for our meeting on the 29th, I'm going to go ahead and end the video.